All right, guys, how's everybody doing? Good, okay, great, great. Um, just like the uh, past couple of weeks, some of these things we have to cover pretty often because um, they're important. So please don't touch or bump the table because our TV's on the table, our camera, everything's on the table. So just take a step back. Can everybody see what I'm doing right here or can everybody see the TV screen pretty clearly? All right, um, so today I'm gonna talk to you a little bit about measuring. There's, uh, you know, there's really just three parts to making a drawing and uh, measuring and then values and edges. Some people call that shading. We like to break shading down into values and edges. So today we're gonna focus on measuring. So you don't always have to measure. You know, some people never measure. Um, but if you want to draw something and it's complicated and you have to get it accurate, um, there are some really good techniques for measuring. So how many are familiar with uh, Mount Rushmore? I should try to figure out a way to get a picture of that into this video. Um, has everybody has seen Mount Rushmore? All right. Because one of the techniques I'm going to show you today, I like to give a little bit of history. Um, we're going to use the same technique they used to carve Mount Rushmore. Did you do this the other night? So I'm going to make it optional for you. You can do it again or you can skip it today. So here's the mountain. All right when there's no president's faces carved on it yet. So down here in the, at the bottom in the valley, the sculptor, whose name was Borglin, he had made a life-size sculpture of each president's head. And he had it on a table made out of clay. So just life size, just normal life size. Okay. Can everybody see this? Is this in a good place? Um, and in the top of the head, they put a metal rod down into the head. So it was sturdy and stable. Then off of that metal rod is what's called an armature that could rotate. And they had a dial on it so they could put, so they could assign a number no matter which way they turned it. They had a 360 degree dial. So if he turned it a little bit, they could say, well, now it's on 90 or 89 or 85. And at the end of that armature, they had a string with a weight on it and they would measure. Let's say they wanted to find out where the tip of Lincoln's nose was. They'd put the armature directly above the nose. They would measure down on the string to the tip of the nose. So there'd be a distance here. Let's say that's six inches. Then they would measure from the string into the nose. So that's that distance. Let's say that's three inches, for example. All right, now the sculpture up on the mountain had to be like a hundred times bigger than this. So they would multiply both of these by a number, let's say a hundred. So now that becomes 600 inches down and 300 inches into the tip of the nose. So up here on the mountain, they had another rod driven down into the mountain with an armature coming out and a rope. And on the end of the rope was a man. In fact, it was Borglund's son. And they would send these numbers up. They would tell them where on the armature they had to be. Let's say they're at 90. Then they would say, you need to come down on the rope 600 inches. And then we need you to drill into the mountain 300 inches. And so before they started carving those faces, there were hundreds of holes drilled into the stone to precise points in three-dimensional space. Does that make sense? Okay. Ours is not going to be that complicated. By the way, it'd be impossible to get a likeness of a person as big as those heads are. Does anybody know how tall the heads are on Mount Rushmore? All right, we're going to look that up by the end of today and we're going to know. So it'd be very difficult, probably impossible to actually make it look like somebody just kind of winging it and chiseling on it. 
So measuring is sometimes absolutely necessary. Um, so I've got three different uh, samples here of things that you can practice with. Um, and I'm going to, I'm just going to draw this farm, this barn here. So um, everybody knows how to measure from here to here, right? What tool would you use? Ruler. What's that? A ruler. A ruler. Who said that? Good, Hannah. A ruler. A ruler measures one dimensionally from one point to another. But we have to measure two-dimensionally because we have height and width. So we need a two-dimensional ruler. We need one that goes this way and one that goes that way. And that's all this really is. We call it a grid, but it's really a two-dimensional ruler for accuracy. So, um, and I like to think of a grid or a tool like this, uh, like at my house, I've got this screwdriver that's like this big. Can you see it on the camera? It's really big and it actually flexes and bends, and I, I rarely ever need it. But every once in a while, like every two years or something, I need that screwdriver, and it's really super handy to have when you need that specific screwdriver. Or like a ladder. How often do you need a ladder? We have a ladder here. It's in the closet like 364 days a year, but when you need a ladder, it's really good to have. There was a time when I didn't have a ladder in this different studio that I had, and I can remember stacking these tables on top of each other because I had to get up really high. Let me tell you, that is not a good way to get up high, stacking tables and chairs. So, you know, and think about driving uh, a nail. You could drive a nail with a rock, all right, but it's gonna be hard. You know, if you have a hammer, it makes the job a lot easier. A grid makes this really easy. The top of the barn, uh, this little peak is about right here. This corner, I think it's about right here. This corner is on this line about right here. The other top edge of the barn is approximately right here. This is about right here, here. Here, where's this? So when you do yours, you've got some options. We've got a horse. We've got this nice landscape you can do. Would you hand me one of each one of those, please, Jaden? The bird, and then also, yeah, the horse. So we've got the landscape with the barn, we've got a bird, we've also got a horse with a grid on it. So you can pick a subject that you like. Now I'd rather have you just do his legs or his head, or I'd rather have you just do, you know, the, the barn and do it as good as you possibly can, as opposed to trying to do the whole thing and rush it, okay? Another little <clears throat> tip. <clears throat> Let's say you're doing the horse. And you've located some points, and you're starting to sketch and draw. You see this little shape right here between the horse's shoulder and that line? That is a negative shape. And that can be really helpful sometimes. If you're, if you're having trouble, take a look at these negative shapes. Or you could look at the negative shapes in between the legs. Those can really help you sometimes to actually get the legs correct. All right, I wanna cover <clears throat> one other measuring technique just really for fun, because I want to show you a couple. You don't have to do this one today. Okay, where did it go? Here it is. This is another uh, technique for locating points called sight sizing. 
okay? Uh, on sight sizing, the, the big limitation is the drawing has to be the exact same size as the original. Whereas with um, a grid, if I enlarge the blocks, I'm going to get a bigger drawing. So you can scale things up or down with a grid. Uh, with sight sizing, you have to do it the exact same size. So for example, the tips of his ears, you just measure straight across. You know they're on this line. Then you just have to measure from the side like this to establish the tip of that ear is right there. The tip of this ear is about right there. The bottom of his head is down on this line. And the center of the bottom of his mouth is about right here. So essentially, we're doing the same thing. We're locating points. We're just using a different technique. Did it go off? Yeah. OK. As long as we're still recording, we're good. All right, anybody have any questions about this? I want you to do the grid. You don't have to do the sight sizing.